We are joined now by the State Department's Undersecretary for Political Affairs, Victoria Newland. She was also ambassador to NATO under the second Bush administration, so she knows this subject area very well. Uh, ambassador Newland, uh, thank you for joining us. I want to get to that first question about the direction of the crisis. Uh, is it escalating or de-escalating? What's the latest? Tony, even though President Putin is claiming he's withdrawing, our concern is that the troops that matter, those that are ringing Ukraine to the north, to the east, and to the south, are actually increasing their readiness. So he is maintaining every option to go in at a time of his choosing. So it sounds like, from your perspective, we're still in a crisis or escalation phase of this, not de-escalation. There was a cyber attack uh, on the Ukrainian army and two banks in the country yesterday. Is it the belief of the U.S. government that that was Putin uh, laying the groundwork potentially for a broader assault? Well, we're still investigating and, and doing forensics along with the Ukrainians. I think what's most important is that these cyber attacks were not very successful. They were the, both the Ministry of Defense and the banks were able to reestablish in real time, and that is a direct result of the hard work that the Ukrainians have been doing with our help to make themselves resilient. But who is best at the, this? Who uses this weapon all around the world? Obviously, the Kremlin. Ambassador, we cover this story every day. We have for weeks now. But for the average American sitting at home who wants to understand why this former Soviet republic halfway around the world seems to be so important to the current administration, what do you say to them? What I say to them is if an authoritarian leader anywhere in the world is able to invade their neighbor and take them over by force and deny them sovereignty, then this won't end at Ukraine. It'll happen all around the world. China is watching vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan. Iran is watching. North Korea is watching. So we have to maintain U.N. principles of international law that protect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of every single country, notably including Ukraine. That is the front line of the democracies versus the autocracies competition at this moment. Well, Ambassador, uh, uh, President Putin's goal here, to the best uh, we can understand it, is to limit the encroachment of NATO on Russia's border, so the eastern expansion of NATO. Uh, why is it so important for NATO to continue to move in that direction? And is it your concern that Putin could take Ukraine today, but then move to rebuild, essentially, the former Soviet Union in the future? Tony, NATO is a defensive alliance. Its purpose since its founding in 1949 is to protect the security of its members. So if you are not coming for us, we are not coming for you. And in fact, NATO never even had any forces on its east eastern edge in Poland or the Baltic states until after Russia took Crimea and invaded eastern Ukraine. So this is a, a conflict of Russia's own making. Ambassador, I know that the U.S. government does not want to detail what the sanctions will be against Putin and Russia if there is an invasion. However, I am curious to know why you are confident sanctions will work or could work in this scenario, given they have not been successful in prior conflicts. I'm thinking of Crimea. Tony, what we are preparing this time with the European Union and other allies and partners around the world, including the U.K. and Canada, will be absolutely crushing financially for Russia and in terms of Russia's ability uh, to grow its economy and modernize going forward. So, you know, not only will this be a bloody, awful conflict for Ukraine and for the Russian people, it will also throw Russia back into isolation for a very, very long time. You asked me a question about rebuilding the Soviet Union. Union. This is the concern, that Putin has a, a revanchist fantasy about rebuilding the, the former Soviet Union, whether it's, it starts with Ukraine it includes Belarus. It could go as far as Moldova. And that will throw not only Europe, but the world back into a Cold War posture. And that's what we're trying to prevent. And that's why we want uh, to see diplomacy succeed here and why we're continuing to press that with Putin and with everybody else on the Russian side. And to avoid, as you put it, a bloody, awful conflict. Ambassador Newland, thank you. Thank you, Tony. All right.